You're watching Let the Quran Speak. The last 10 nights, according to Islamic tradition, there's a special night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan that is considered better than a thousand months. What's so special about this night and how can we benefit from it? Here with me is Brother Shabir Ali. He's the president of the Islamic Information Center. Brother Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. Now, uh, I'll begin by asking you, what is, a, what is the special night that we're looking for in the last 10 nights? That, that night is referred to as the night of decree. Uh, sometimes it's also called the night of power, like mm -hmm. the little Qadr in, in Arabic. And the name uh, is reflected in, the, in a surah of the, of the Quran, a short surah, which uh, says uh, that this night is better than a thousand months. Mm -hmm. So, what makes it so so much better than, than all these days uh, in the year? Mm -hmm. That surah itself says that uh, the uh, angels and uh, a special spirit descends from God on that night and, and it is peace until the break of dawn. The commentators explain that on this night God uh, issues the decrees to the angels uh, on, on certain aspects of uh, affecting humans uh, for the next year. Uh, some people who will die, for example, the, the amount of sustenance people will, will, will receive. And uh, it is also narrated in some traditions that uh, the angels uh, uh, tour the world looking for those people who are engaged in, in the worship of God on that night. And uh, they, according to the tradition, uh, shake hands with, with the persons. Of course, it must, be a, it must not be taken literally because the people do not experience shaking the hands with the angels. Um, or it could, uh, a, another way of interpreting the same saying, rather than interpreting it as shaking hands, it, it could mean literally that the angels touch the people who are worshipping or brush against them uh, as they are worshipping on that night. Was the Quran also revealed in in this night? This um, surah that we're referring to um, uh, does not uh, mention that the uh, the name of the, the word Quran itself as the name of the scripture, but it says "Inna anzalna hu fi little qadr." This is in the ninety seventh chapter of the Quran, the first verse. We have revealed it on the night of power. But the commentators generally think that the it here refers to the Quran itself. Elsewhere in the Quran, in Surah 2, verse uh, 185, uh, it, it is mentioned that uh, the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan. And uh, putting these verses together, uh, the commentators believe that the night of power occurs in the month of Ramadan and uh, the Quran was revealed uh, first on that night and then subsequently over a period of 23 years. Mm -hmm. Was it completed on that night too? Uh, this is not mentioned any, anywhere that I know of. So it, it is, it, sometimes it is said that uh, the first revelation was given to the Prophet peace be upon him on that, on that night. And, and for those who may not be familiar with the entire process, it, it is believed that the Quran was not revealed all at once, but it was given a piece at a time to the Prophet Muhammad um, over a period of 23 years. So the first piece was given to him on the night of power during the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, some other uh, suggestion is also available in the commentaries that the Quran was somehow revealed from the protected tablet in heaven to what is referred to as Allah, uh, the, the Sama al dunya the, the heaven connected with this world. Or, or the sky connected with this world, and then from there it was gradually revealed to the Prophet over this period of 23 years. Mm -hmm. So you've mentioned that the angels descend on this night. What is the benefit to human beings? Well, uh, human beings d do not uh, actually experience the angels in, in their presence. Mm -hmm. but, but generally, uh, uh, generally this night, what is the Yeah, generally the idea that the angels do come down on this night uh, it inspires Muslims to worship. Uh, the, the very fact that the Quran states that this night is better than a thousand months uh, is an, uh, an added incentive for Muslims to worship on this night because the traditions further expound on this to say that uh, worshipping on this night is better than worshipping for a thousand months and mm -hmm. a thousand months as you know would translate into 83 years and four months that's a lifetime for many people uh, so if, if, if a person worships on this night then uh, we, we believe he or she gets the reward as uh, worshipping for a whole lifetime so this mm -hmm. is a tremendous amount of reward the one night is definitely not to be wasted. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a saying of the Prophet, whoever prays uh, with sincerity and faith, 
during this night will have uh, his or her sins forgiven. Absolutely. And uh, of course, before we run out of time, it is essential that our viewers know uh, when to find this night. Uh, it, it is said in the traditions that uh, the night occurs uh, within the last 10 days of, of Ramadan, uh, any, of, any of the 10 nights, more specifically among the odd nights of the, of the last 10. So mm -hmm. the 21st night, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th. And uh, even further, so it, 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 some scholars believe that it's the 27th night in particular. Um, and now, Muslims have various ways of counting the days of Ramadan. Uh, it varies from one community to another, but uh, whatever is the count within a community, Muslims should uh, observe that particular night. Uh, with uh, worshiping God with, with fervor, with zeal, and with the full conviction that God will accept their prayers and forgive their sins. Mm -hmm. What are your suggestions in terms of things for Muslims to do during this night? Uh, one can uh, recite the Quran, one can recite prayers, uh, the, the formal ritual types of prayers which are called salat, uh, voluntary prayers in addition to uh, the regular Isha night prayer and uh, the Tarawih prayer that is done in the mosque or whether one does it at home. Uh, one would do some additional prayers, uh, one would uh, engage in what is referred to as dhikr or the remembrance of God. One should also ask for forgiveness of, of sins. A, a particular prayer is given in Arabic. Arabic, but it could be said in any language. But in Arabic, it is mentioned in the traditions, Allahumma inna ka'afu tuhibbu al-afu fa'afu anni. Oh God, you are forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive me. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, uh, any sort of uh, guidance in terms of what the Prophet Muhammad himself did during these last 10 nights? It is mentioned that when nights uh, approach, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would uh, often uh, engage in what is called the atikaf. He would uh, resign himself to worship in the mosque, which means that he's secluded from worldly affairs and totally dedicated during these days. Uh, and I said often, but in fact this was his usual practice, especially in the last years of his life. Uh, and uh, he would, uh, the traditions say he, he would like tighten his belt, uh, the equivalent of, uh, of tightening one's belt. And uh, that indicates that he would be getting ready to uh, do some strenuous activity, meaning that he would engage in uh, worship uh, in, in a very uh, determined manner. Mm -hmm. So I guess Muslims can also follow this example. They can also engage in atikaf, as you mentioned, going into seclusion. That's right. It's mentioned as a sunnah. And what it means is that a person, um, you know, people take holidays and they go to different parts of the world to enjoy themselves. A, a Muslim finds a special enjoyment in worship. And uh, one might uh, use one's vacation time or, or some other time uh, to, to say, I'm going to resign myself to worshiping during this last 10 days of Ramadan. I'll be in the mosque. And in that case, regardless when the night falls, uh, that special night of power within the last 10 days, I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm worshiping all of the time. My total time is now dedicated to God and uh, I'll do nothing but worship God. Of course, we have all kinds of necessities of life. We have to eat, we have to go to the bathroom and so on. Um, all of this is understood, but the rest of one's uh, waking hours is spent in uh, maraqaba or meditation or uh, the remembrance of God, reading the Quran, learning something about Islam, and uh, offering voluntary prayers. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone who can't do that extensive sort of seclusion, engage in that extensive sort of um, seclusion, what advice would you give? Um, well, can they still uh, make, develop their relationship with God in, at, at this time? Doing the yes, one, one can go into a partial seclusion for a part of the 10 okay. days, if not the entire thing. Uh, one can, uh, in fact, devote some time to worship in God even at home. Um, uh, on the whole, we can try it as much as possible uh, to uh, leave all other sorts mm -hmm. of activities uh, from within those last 10 days, mm -hmm. leave them for after the day of the festivity and uh, devote as much time as we can to uh, helping the poor, uh, helping others in general uh, and, and worshiping God. All right, thank you for that. Brother You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers.